Hey there, Daniel Bach here from jumpscience.com. Starting a new video series on top speed. All right, so to start this, we need to lay some groundwork. And so we're gonna start with physics. Uh, we need to go over Newton's laws of motion, okay? So we're gonna start with number two, uh, force equals mass times acceleration. It's a very simple equation. Uh, basically, when you put force on an object, you're going to get acceleration that is directly proportional to that force. All right? Now, part of that is if you have zero force, then you get zero acceleration. So if an object is at rest and you don't put a force on it, that object will not accelerate. And if that object is in motion at a constant velocity, you don't put force on it, that object will continue to move at a constant velocity. Okay, so the first rule, objects at rest tend to stay at rest, objects in motion tend to stay in motion. That's really just uh, a particular component of the second rule, okay? Force equals mass times acceleration. Uh, and then the third rule, every force has an equal and opposite force. Okay, so you throw a baseball, the baseball puts as much force into your hand as your hand puts into the baseball. Um, I'm standing here, I'm pushing force into the ground, the ground is pushing equal force back up into me. Okay, ground reaction force is something we'll be talking about a lot. But again, every force has an equal and opposite force to match it. Okay, then the other big thing we have to cover is force vectors. So force has a very specific direction and it produces acceleration specifically in that direction. Uh, but what we can do, so let's say this is a, we'll call it a resultant vector. We can break this up into smaller component vectors which are perpendicular. Okay, now we're gonna make those component vectors perpendicular because perpendicular forces have no influence on each other. So when it comes to problem solving, uh, you want to make all your forces perpendicular so you can treat each direction separately. Okay, it makes things very simple. Uh, but what we can't do is make a vector that is perpendicular to our resultant vector because this resultant vector has no component that is perpendicular. This vector would be zero. Okay, so again, Perpendicular forces have no influence on each other. Uh, a force cannot produce acceleration that is perpendicular to that force. All right, so vertical force can't produce horizontal acceleration. Horizontal force cannot produce vertical acceleration. Uh, very important concept to understand. All right, so let's talk about top speed. Uh, you have a horizontal velocity, right? So how much acceleration is required to maintain a horizontal velocity of 30 kilometers per hour. That would be zero acceleration. What about 40 kilometers per hour? Maintaining it is zero acceleration. 50 kilometers per hour, zero acceleration, right? Now, if we have zero acceleration, we have zero force, okay? That's the second law, F equals MA. So, no matter how high the velocity is, in order to maintain it, you need zero horizontal force. All right. Now that is zero horizontal net force. In other words, you could have forces that balance each other out. The total sum of them has to be zero. Okay. So to run at any horizontal velocity, what you have to do is balance out horizontal forces. Okay. So what are the opposing horizontal forces? What's working against you when you sprint? Uh, air resistance, right? Air resistance is going to be pushing you back. Then, also, and this is a force that hopefully you don't have, but most people do. Uh, this is where force vectors come in, okay? So when you hit the ground, your force is going to go from your hip to your foot in that direction. So if that has a forward angle to it, Okay, if your foot is in front of your hip, then that's going to create some horizontal force, right? So the force that's coming back from the ground is going to be on a backwards angle, right? And that's going to be broken into components. You have your 
uh, perpendicular component from the ground that's vertical and then you have the horizontal component would be your friction okay friction pushing you back so you have air resistance and you have friction pushing you back now hopefully this friction is little to nothing right uh, proper sprint mechanics are going to get your foot under your hip so that you minimize this braking force okay now where do we get force pushing forward well during the later part of your foot contact your hips are going to move in front of your foot okay so then that force that you're pushing is going to be on a backwards angle and the force coming up from the ground is going to be on that forwards angle uh, again you have that perpendicular to the ground that vertical component and now you're going to have forward friction okay so you have a little bit of braking force at the beginning and then a propulsive force in the latter part of your strike on the ground okay so in order to sprint any velocity if we're looking at horizontal forces what we need is for this forward force to balance out this backwards force and this backwards force now again hopefully this is zero or next to zero all right in other words hopefully you just need some forward propulsive force to match air resistance now air resistance is a very small force okay so my question is uh, looking at things horizontally why can't we run 50 kilometers per hour heck why can't we run a hundred kilometers per hour okay I don't know what velocity it would take to make air resistance the limiting factor on your sprint but I can tell you that it is a much higher velocity than any human has ever run okay because air resistance is not a very large force if it was just up to air resistance we would be able to run a lot faster than we can okay so what's going on how come we can't get to those higher horizontal velocities we need to look at vertical forces okay so for vertical force we have gravity pulling us down right and then we have our ground reaction force these vertical force components pushing us up okay we'll go with gr for ground reaction force okay so uh, when i'm standing here i have the same thing going on right gravity's pulling me down i have ground reaction force force pushing me up and i have to produce enough force pushing into the ground to get the force pushing back uh, to counteract gravity so that i can stand up all right if i'm not pushing that force into the ground i'm going to fall right now you have to do the same thing when you're sprinting okay if you don't produce enough vertical force to counteract gravity then you will drop down on every uh, stride okay now sprinting is actually a little bit different than standing uh, sprinting has a flight phase where you are totally in the air you have neither foot on the ground so during that time we know that gravity is accelerating you down because you can't possibly be fighting gravity when you're not on the ground. So gravity is accelerating you down. That means when you hit the ground again, you have to uh, actually re-accelerate yourself back up. Okay? And because of that, every stride in a sprint is actually like a tiny little vertical jump. Okay? You have to pop off the ground a little bit on every stride to balance out that uh, acceleration downward from gravity. Okay, now, what changes as we get more horizontal velocity, what changes in the vertical realm? Okay, um, gravity doesn't get any stronger as you get faster. Uh, you don't have to jump any higher on each stride. Okay, what changes? It's the ground contact time. Okay. So if you're moving with more horizontal velocity, you're going to move past this point of contact on the ground faster in less time. Okay? So that means that you have to do that little vertical jump 
in less time. All right, that's less time to produce that vertical force to counteract gravity. All right, this is the limiting factor on top speed. Okay, how fast can you be moving horizontally and still produce vertical force fast enough to counteract gravity and stay on your feet? Okay, that's really what top speed sprinting is. It's just staying on your feet with a lot of horizontal velocity. All right. So it is actually vertical force production that determines how fast you can run horizontally. Okay? Now that's counterintuitive because sprinting's horizontal motion, right? You don't think vertical force determines horizontal motion, but that's the way it is. Now, if you don't believe the physics, uh, you can prove this to yourself, okay? Uh, it's a little bit dangerous, but you can prove it to yourself. Uh, strap yourself to a treadmill, okay, so that you cannot go off the back of it. Get that treadmill going faster and faster. Now tell me, if you have something holding you forward, pulling you forward, you have all the horizontal force you could ask for, why is it going to get harder and harder to stay on that treadmill as it gets faster? Well, it's because you have to produce more and more vertical force, you have to produce force faster uh, in order to stay on your feet, right? Now, a way more dangerous situation would be pulling yourself behind a car. As that car gets faster, it's going to get way harder. Even though the car is doing all the horizontal work for you, it can't produce the vertical force for you to keep you on your feet, okay? And if you go past your top speed, let's say you get to, uh, you know, 14 meters per second, about 50 kilometers per hour, you are going to fall. Even though the car is giving you all the horizontal force you could ask for, you're going to fall because you can't produce enough vertical force to stay on your feet. All right? So top speed is determined by very fast vertical force production. Okay? That is critical to understand. All right. So let's go over some misconceptions about top speed. Uh, there is no claw in sprinting. Okay? You are not pulling the ground underneath you. That is a myth, all right? Watch any uh, slow motion video of sprinting and you're gonna see that the foot never goes backwards relative to the track, okay? It moves forward and then as the sprinter is snapping their foot under their hip, that foot is going to go straight down and then it's gonna go forward again. It's never gonna go backwards relative to the track. It goes backwards relative to the sprinter but not relative to the track. Okay, there is no clawing at the ground. That is a misconception. Uh, the reason that we pull the foot back under the hip is to prevent braking force, right? It's to prevent this. It is not to propel you forward down the track. Okay, again, maintaining a velocity does not require forward propulsion. Okay, now the horizontal force that you do get, right, that forward push that you do get, is the product of a push being angled, okay, and because it's angled, there's a horizontal component to it, but it is not from pulling, okay? Now, along with that misconception is this misconception about the strength training you need to do for top speed sprinting, okay? Since people think that uh, you're pulling the ground underneath you, they think that you have to uh, train this action of hyperextension of the hip and pushing behind you. So they, they use horizontal loading and train hip hyperextension with things like back extensions and reverse hypers or uh, uh, barbell hip thrusts, right? Um, and that just stems from a misunderstanding of the physics of sprinting, okay? Sprinting is not loaded horizontally. Sprinting is loaded vertically by gravity and triple extension force pushing into the ground is the thing that determines your top speed. Which means that your primary strength training movements are still squat, deadlift, clean, snatch, right? It's the same stuff that you would use for any other uh, athletic movement. All right, your top speed is determined by how fast you can produce vertical force. Okay, that's the main point of this video. Now, we have a lot of other things to talk about. We will cover those in future videos. Stay tuned.